Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY, where I like to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. If you're new to my channel, I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button and make sure your notifications are set to all. Today, I'm very excited to bring you these four spring home decor DIYs using stencils from a maker studio. I really hope you like them. Here we go. For this first project, I'm using an embroidery hoop, three five gallon paint stir sticks, some burlap and gingham ribbons, some greenery, and this welcome stencil from a maker studio. So ignore the fact that two of these sticks are painted gray. I was going to use them for a different project that I changed my mind about. So I'm just cutting some pieces of these jumbo craft sticks that I'm going to hot glue to the back of these three paint stir sticks to attach them together. So I'm just cutting a couple of them apart and then hot gluing the pieces to the back. This is just going to give me a three paint stick width piece of wood for my project. So I'm going to give this a coat of Waverly chalk paint in ink. It's a beautiful black and I'm going to cover the front and all the sides edges of this piece. Now I'm kind of placing here first where I'm going to place the stencil based on the hoop. And if you've never watched any of my videos with these stencils, they are a mesh stencil. They are lightly adhesive on the back. So you just are going to rub them down and place them where you want them. Now there are different inks you can use, but I'm going to use our chalk art. If you don't seal the chalk art, you can wipe it away with water. Um, this is great for projects that maybe you want to change what it says, but I'm going to show you here how you can make it permanent, but you just basically spread this on, scrape the excess away, and then when you lift your stencil, you're going to have a beautiful image with clean, crisp lines. So here's that matte sealer by Amy Howard at home that once your chalk art has dried for, I would say at least a couple hours, you will lightly brush this over the top and it will then make your chalk art permanent. A Maker Studio also has inks for fabric and glass um, surfaces. Now I'm going to draw little pencil lines where my hoop is going to touch my piece of wood and just cover those lines with some hot glue and then place my wood hoop down. Now, if you don't have a wood hoop, you could do this with one of the small hula hoops from Dollar Tree. Um, you could also use a wreath form for this if you'd like. Just cut one of the pieces. Putting a little extra hot glue on the inside there and then let that dry completely. Now I decided to use greenery for my wreath, but you could definitely use colored flowers if you want. I wanted to make this one, yes, it's springy with the greenery, but it really could be kept up um, for most of the year. So I'm just hot gluing little pieces and this is what it looks like with all my greenery glued on. Now I'm taking um, a burlap ribbon that I got at a thrift store. You could definitely do this with the Dollar Tree ribbon. I just didn't have enough and I'm folding it over and making two loops on each side and just kind of pinching it in the middle and then I'm going to twist to make my other tail and I am still a newbie at making bows but I was actually pretty pleased with how this one turned out. Take some floral wire and twist it around the center there to hold your bow in place. And once you've got it fluffed how you want it, this is the great thing about using wire edged ribbon. 
is go ahead and cut your tails the length that you want. I just cut them at a slight angle. And then we're going to hot glue this to that spot right there on the hoop. And here's my finished wreath. You can see I did do a smaller black and white gingham uh, bow on top of the burlap bow. And I will add a jute string to the back for this to be able to hang. So I was really pleased with this. This welcome stencil is awesome. My next project, I'm using three of the houses from Dollar Tree, some gray shiplap scrapbook paper, some moss, and two other stencil sheets. One is called birds and the other with the words is called nest. The first thing I'm doing is applying a light layer of matte finish Mod Podge to the back of each of the houses. And then I'm going to spritz some water on my paper and adhere that down. I just find that when you make the paper a little damp, it really helps it adhere well without bubbles. Once all of those are dry, I'm taking my little Fiskars fingertip craft knife and just trimming away the excess of the scrapbook paper. Then just to clean up the edges, I'm just taking my sanding sponge from Dollar Tree and just sanding downward to, like I said, clean up the edges of our houses. I was afraid this paper was going to be a little too dark, so I decided to take my white Waverly chalk paint and a chip brush and just dry brush ever so lightly some of this white paint just to lighten up that dark gray a little bit. And really it gave a little bit more texture to the project, so I was really happy I did that extra step. I did then have to come back in with a Sharpie and draw my shiplap lines. I'm going to then go ahead and do another light layer of Mod Podge on top to make sure my scrap of paper is completely sealed. Now, I love these bird stencils, okay? So I decided I was gonna do two different bird stencils and then some words in the middle. So the little swoop there that I'm putting at the top and the birds are on a stencil sheet called Birds on a Maker Studio. And the words are on one called nest. And actually that bless is on uh, the next stencil I'm going to show you in the next project. This chalk art is so beautiful. This is a dark navy. It's called Land of Goshen. And I just think it's really, really pretty. It's a darker color for spring. But I just think it looks gorgeous with these bird stencils. I don't know if you noticed, but where I just pulled off the word bless... That stencil actually says blessed and I just took some painter's tape to cover up the E and D because I didn't need them for this project. What do you guys think of these stencils? I think these birds are absolutely beautiful. So bless this nest in the middle and then these gorgeous bird images. All right, so just to dress this up and add a little bit more texture to the project, I'm going to hot glue some of this floral moss to the roof of each of my three houses, and then that will be a finished project. And here's how all three of the finished houses look together. I like that you can use both the inside and the backside of these houses, so I may do something different on the inside. We'll see. For my third project, I'm using some two by six wood, some word stencils again, some burlap ribbon, some greenery, and some Kills chalk art. So these are seven and a half inch lengths of two by six, and I'm using this white Kills chalk paint. I'm just giving them all one coat of this white paint, and we are going to make a faux book stack. So once I had them all dry, I'm just a little bit sanding um, the spine here where my word stencil is going to go just to make sure it's going to be as smooth as possible. Now these words are from a stencil sheet called Be Still. 
Um, and so was the blessed that I used on the birdhouses. So I'm going to make my books say faith, hope, and love. And I love that they're all three different fonts. Notice the one that says faith actually says faith over fear, but you can just use parts of stencils as well. I'm using the black chalk art this time that's called Preaching to the Choir. And again, we're just going to apply it the same way we've done before with spreading it and then scraping away a little bit of the excess to reveal a beautiful stenciled word. And now we're just gonna peel off the stencil. These are reusable. I always get that question. You just clean them off with water and then put them back on the backing. Now you could keep your three pieces separate. I decided I wanted to go ahead and wood glue them together so they're just one piece. Um, if you wanted your books to be kind of uh, crooked, not perfectly lined up, you could glue them together that way as well. I'm just gluing them straight as a nice, neat stack of books. And once those were dry, I am taking my Dollar Tree burlap ribbon and I'm going to wrap my book stack both the long way and then the short way um, between the left edge and the words. So just hot gluing it on either end and then trimming away the excess. Then for just a little bit more decoration on top of our book stack, I'm just taking little pieces of greenery and also some floral and just hot gluing those together on the top of my stack. This is something of course you could do whatever type of florals you want or just do a big bow on top. I am going to add a little black and white gingham ribbon from Dollar Tree in a bow to the top of my stack as well to finish it off. And here's our finished book stack. If you don't have the stencil, of course, you can use sticker letters or even a paint marker to write your words. I think I'm gonna make a few of these for my spring craft show. My last project is a little bit of a flip. I took this sign that was on clearance at Hobby Lobby, another stencil, a Dollar Tree sign, and this metal wording that I got on clearance from another store. Um, all of these things, you know, use what you have. I just wanna give you ideas and also show you how awesome these stencils are. So this sign, I believe was like $20 at Hobby Lobby. I got it super cheap on clearance. I love the wood frame, but I'm going to paint over these words. I want this, this sign for me is also going to go um, landscape rather than portrait. And I just did one little layer of our black chalk art, or sorry, Waverly chalk paint, and then removed the tape. Now this plaid stencil is from a maker studio. Obviously it's not going to cover the whole sign in one take, but that's okay because I'm just gonna do this much, let it dry a little bit, and then move my stencil and complete the space there to the right. I'm using the white chalk art again like I did on our first project and just taking my time spreading the chalk art and scraping away the excess. These little containers of this chalk art paint last a really long time because you use such a small amount each time. I love the texture that this plaid stencil gives. And here, like I said, I overlapped and now I'm doing the rest of the sign.
And here's what it looks like all filled in. I don't mind that the middle is a little heavy because we're going to be covering some of that up anyway. So this spring sign from Dollar Tree, I had already painted it white on the back because I was going to use it for something else. Changed my mind and so now I want to paint it with the Waverly chalk paint in maize. It's a beautiful sunny spring or summer color and this just took one coat. Then to make the edges pop a little bit, I'm just going around them with a black Sharpie marker all the way around the sign. Now, like I said, I got this home sweet home metal uh, wording on clearance from a, a local store and I just cut it apart with my metal cutters. And now using my Dollar, Dollar Tree Fix All Adhesive, I'm going to glue down these metal words to my sign. I decided to glue a few um, Jenga blocks to the back of the sign so that when I attach it to the background, it will raise it up some out from the sign and give some added dimension. So just took these five blocks, glued them to the back of the sign. Now putting hot glue on the blocks, I'm going to attach it to the back of our sign. And here's our finished product. I love the beautiful yellow. I think it's so sweet for spring and summer and actually year round if it fits your color scheme. Thanks again for joining me today. I hope you'll follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite. Let me know if you have any questions about a maker studio. I'd love to answer for you. And if you like budget home decor DIYs, please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time. Bye.